As you guys know, I'm absolutely obsessed with Chinese historical dramas from Empresses in the Palace to Bu Yi's Love in the Palace to even Yangtze Palace. Your girl has literally watched them all. And the reason why I feel like I'm so obsessed with Chinese historical dramas is that they have a lot in common with Black American fashion as well as African fashion in general. So in this video, I decided to do a good compare contrast type beat in order to show y'all what I'm talking about. So if you're interested in a video comparing Chinese historical fashion to black american fashion and african fashion keep on watching hi guys welcome or welcome back to ella pastoral if this is your first time ever coming to this channel welcome hi on this channel i typically talk about all my favorite pieces of media as well as talking about social issues in today's video i am definitely going to be talking about chinese dramas this video was able to be made thanks to all of my lovely patreons you guys have been supporting me so much and allowing me to do these weird very niche videos and i want to thank you guys so much for your support now back on the topic of Chinese dramas I was generally so surprised when this video that I did on Chinese dramas did well I did not think that there were any other people on this side of YouTube that would be into Chinese dramas and I found y'all so I decided that I was going to finally make this video because there were some things that I was noticing in these Chinese dramas that just look so similar to the culture that I'm in that I had to say something. So the first thing that I noticed definitely has to be the whole topic of hair pieces and added hair. So when I first started watching Chinese dramas, the one thing that definitely stood out was the intricate hairstyles that made up the fashion. I'm definitely going to be putting pictures on the screen for you guys to see, but when I started watching Chinese dramas, I was like, oh my gosh, these girls have such intricate hairstyles. And obviously, the history of China is one of the longest slash most extensive slash most documented histories of the entire human race. So obviously, I'm super generalizing in this video. But when you look at historical Chinese dramas, you can see that there's just so much beauty to be seen and the intricate hair pieces and the way their hair is styled is definitely a part of that culture so from this hairstyle to that hairstyle i've noticed that in these chinese historical dramas the way that you were able to demonstrate your status and role in your society was definitely shown in your hair and how well styled it was practically like i said the whole entire history of china is long and extensive and there are literally different dynasties that make up China as we see in these historical dramas but I just wanted to point out some of my favorites mostly from the Qin dynasty because I believe that it is the longest Chinese dynasties so the two hairstyles that I noticed that were very similar to hairstyles I see in black culture have to be the Tuan To and the Yan Wei. The Tuan To is a simple large round bun that is styled at the top of the head and it's described as resembling a decorated Mount Tua bun and this hairstyle may or may not have a Yan Wei slash swallowed tail below and I got this information from one of my favorite tumblr pages of all time I'm gonna be putting their ads on the screen for you guys they are just such a good historical reference for people who are obsessed with Chinese dramas like I am and I definitely wanted to shout them out because I definitely like to lurk on their page just to learn more about Chinese fashion Chinese culture all of that and I'm definitely going to be putting pictures on the screen to show you all of the different ways that people have styled the Tuan To as well as the Yan way style because if you guys look at how intricate these added hair pieces are and how they make the hair bigger and this that and the fourth you can really tell that these ladies put a lot of time into making their hair styled like that and I feel like the importance of hair is something that was demonstrated a lot in Chinese dramas but also in African American culture like for example this hair is literally the same as my natural hair but my best friend took a while to do it because of how detailed it was and I just feel like that is something that black watchers will definitely relate to and like I said these hairstyles are very intricate and they give a lot of volume to the hair and something that I noticed that is very similar between historical Chinese dramas and black culture is how big the hair got the specific subculture of black fashion that made me think of these historical Chinese hairstyles definitely has to be the hoochie mama aesthetic 
aesthetic and so it was very hard to try to find a good definition of the hoochie mama aesthetic because it is seen as like borderline derogatory and people just hate black women but they really hate like black women who are like promiscuous or whatever as is typically associated with the hoochie mama aesthetic but i just find the hoochie mama aesthetic to be so gorgeous and even though people hate it i feel like there is beauty in the hairstyle and i'm just going to be inserting a bunch of pictures of what i mean when i talk about the hoochie mama hair aesthetic because as you can see by the pictures on the screen the hair gets really big and vertical but there's also horizontal elements that i feel like are kind of similar to the historical Chinese hairstyles. Like for example, this hairstyle is a hairstyle that I see a lot of people utilize when they're going for the Huchi Mama aesthetic. And if you pay attention to the intricacies in the curl pattern and how like you have to specifically curl the hair in a certain way to get it that voluminous, it gives it a very complicated look and that is very reminiscent of what we would see in the early 90s. But you mean to tell me like these two hairstyles aren't very like complicated, very intricate? I see the beauty in both of them and I really feel like this is where my love of Chinese drama started from because it's so similar to my own culture. And like I said, with all of the intricate weaving that the Hoochie Mama hairstyle has, it kind of reminds me of braids. If you guys had watched the historical dramas that I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you know when these high-ranked ladies would get ready, it would literally take two of their servants to get their hairstyles to be that intricate. And I know what they are showing us in these historical dramas isn't 100% true some of these scenes are based in historical precedents and seeing how in these dramas they will show us these long intricate scenes of these women taking forever to get ready from their makeup to their hair all of that is so reminiscent of my experience growing up as a little black girl literally when you would watch the scenes of the servants helping the royal slash noble lady get ready it just reminds me of when as a black girl I would be in the chair and someone would be doing my hair and it would take hours and I would get tired and especially when you're watching a Chinese drama and the main character is younger and they'd be like ugh this is taking forever I want to go I want to go horse riding I want to hang out with my friends it's so similar to my experience growing up and what made me like Chinese drama so much it kind of debunks a lot of the stupid rhetoric that I see a lot surrounding black women if you guys aren't black or aren't close to black women you don't know this but we consistently get down for adding hair to our hair to protect it and or just for stylistic purposes sadly it is a common thing to dog slash bully black women for having hair extensions or added hair to our hair in order to add volume for stylistic purposes and and overall for protection like it is a common talking point that no other race of women adds hair to their hair which is a lie and watching Chinese dramas especially the historical ones literally proves that to be true literally if you look at any of the hairstyles that I showed you yes some of these women have their natural hair in these intricate styles but a lot of them have added hair for the volume and so watching these Chinese dramas let me know that it isn't just black women who are adding hair to their hair for stylistic purposes Chinese women in ancient days and even now still do that a lot of women still do that but for some reason black women are the ones being gaslit and now that I'm kind of done talking about hair, I kind of want to talk about a hair adjacent thing which definitely has to be their hats slash gay lace. So if you guys don't know, I'm Ghanaian American and even though I'm Ghanaian American, I'm really close to a lot of Nigerians. We're like cousin countries right and when i was watching a lot of these chinese dramas especially the Qing dynasty ones i noticed that there was a half fixture in their culture that was very reminiscent of west african hairstyling and obviously i know in the Qing dynasty that there was a bunch of strict rules on who was able to wear what this that and the fourth but still the half fixtures that were representative in these chinese dramas that were obviously based off the Qing dynasty still denoted status and I feel like that's low-key true about the gale slash the hats we have in West Africa in Nigerian culture specifically they have gale and gale are just these beautiful ornate hair coverings that definitely make Nigerian women look like sun goddesses and these are typically worn at parties and in weddings and when these are worn they literally denote status I mean obviously there are poor women who wear gale but from all of the TikToks I've seen and interacting with actual Nigerians men 
man when you show up with your nice expensive kele you are looking like the queen mother for real like it's literally giving queen wamunda from wakanda like kele's make you look good and they make you look rich and these hair fixtures definitely make the woman in question look good and i know i'm definitely going to butcher the pronunciation but the gele's remind me of a popular staple in a lot of Qing dynasty dramas called the dianze the dianze were circular hat pieces that were very similar to what the yoruba trap specifically has these beautiful circular head pieces were definitely hat type fixtures that were worn by higher ranked imperial women i'm definitely thinking of imperial noble consorts or maybe even noble consorts and above but i definitely remember these dianze hair pieces being worn by empresses and these dianze hair pieces were so gorgeous so pretty they were also made of a lot of expensive high quality material but the circular shape and how they practically made the higher ranked imperial women look like sons reminded me so much of gales when i saw them for the first time and it isn't just the dianze and the gales that remind me of each other but it's also the importance of hair decorations in both chinese drama as well as regular regular black culture following comparisons are not going to be a one-for-one -one comparison like the dianze and the gales but i definitely wanted to show how intricate both black women and historical chinese women were in terms of decorating their hair and oh my gosh i love 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 how chinese women in these historical dramas made themselves look like like i said before on this channel i'm a simmer so i specifically have a ethnic royal family that dresses like this this right here is empress sake i'm just gonna show you some of the outfits i made for her in my sims game but they're definitely inspired by the beauty that is shown in these chinese dramas and i am just so proud of how my sims look and it's coming from the inspiration of these chinese dramas so the women in these dramas they obviously make their hair look bigger and wider and we see this in a lot of west african fashion choices and there are lots of intricate hair pieces that are put on these women and it just denotes their status and the way these chinese women style themselves is also very reminiscent of nigerian wedding culture i'm definitely going to be inserting pictures here obviously the country of nigeria has a bunch of tribes so i'm going to do my best to represent as many as i can but specifically the women i want to talk about have to be the igbo women of nigeria these women are known for their beautiful wedding culture if you're on tiktok wedding tiktok you see them all over the place and the way the igbo women specifically style their hair is using the material coral and the coral is very well known for the igbo women like once you see these coral hair pieces and jewelry pieces you know that is an igbo woman and it just makes them look so good it makes their hair look big and wide because they they want a good base to then style their hair just like the women in these chinese dramas but they eat down bad the importance of natural materials in order to decorate these women is important and the chinese women in historical dramas are also shown to be doing that so it is rumored that in order to have these beautiful gorgeous hair pieces the chinese women in historical dramas and even in real life use ivory jade gold bronze silver bamboo carved wood turtish shell and bone and it really just depended on your status in the imperial harem system or overall in society on how much illustrious materials that you could be able to use to style your hair and i just feel like oh my god like same another thing that black culture as well as historical chinese fashion has in common is definitely the obsession with nail culture if you guys were following me in the very early stages of my youtube channel i used to do my nails all the time but since i'm a nurse we're not allowed to have like rights at all in terms of our nails like look even my nails are chipped but i used to do these really long intricate nails and just watching chinese dramas i kept seeing myself low-key represented in that and so i definitely want to talk about it so when i was watching these chinese dramas these women had long nails like longer than the nails that i see nowadays and i eventually learned that yes chinese women in historical periods did have long nails but what i was seeing specifically were nail guards and so nail guards have a very interesting history that i want to talk about so chinese women in historical times will definitely grow out their nails to show how privileged they are the longer the nails the more it showed your privilege and prestige if you were able to maintain your nails at a long length it meant that you were extremely privileged because you never had to lift a finger so these chinese women who had these long nails needed to maintain this length and how they did this was by having nail guards these were like ornamental pieces that you could put over your long nails 
in order to make sure that they would not break and there are just so many beautiful ones and I'm just obsessed with them and these intricate nail guards are low-key reminiscent of what I see in black American culture and even in Ghanaian culture with people's obsession with long nails like I'm gonna be inserting a picture of a lot of African Americans but we have a huge nail culture over here where girls will go to the store the salon the nail salon and even people's homes to get the acrylics and stuff and they'll be really long and they'll have these designs and I just feel like it's similar it's very similar but the Chinese women weren't actually painting their nails like with acrylics they had nail guards but still the similarities are there another thing that I definitely noticed is the fan culture I don't even know if I'm titling these sections correctly at all but we as Africans specifically West Africans and historical Chinese women we love 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 our fans um, I just feel like we need to talk about it a lot of the concubines and consorts that lived in ancient China not only used fans to show their social status but how beautifully intricate the designs were on these fans and I believe a lot of them were hand sewn and hand embroidered like if you watch the Chinese dramas you know what I'm talking about these fans are gorgeous 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 right but they also use the fans to keep off the heat and as a West African I have to agree it gets hot and we also have a gigantic fan culture I am doing a lot of mentioning in terms of Nigerians because low-key the stuff Nigerians do we as Ghanaians like we low-key take be lucky take it but if you guys had seen any videos of traditional Nigerian weddings and even Ghanaian weddings nowadays they have these gigantic fans and low key I feel like these fans take the place of a western bouquet like you're more likely to see a fan on a West African bride than you are going to see a bouquet in the hands of a West African bride and just putting these two pictures side by side of a Chinese consort versus a Nigerian bride you can see that the fans a low-key a part of the uniform at this point and seeing how these ladies will talk with these fans how they will use the fans for intrigue in these dramas was just so interesting because like yo it's giving nollywood it's giving gollywood low-key and i just feel like it is so much fun to just watch chinese dramas i will always say how much i love chinese dramas and i think i'm gonna be coming out with a video soon talking about all of my favorite chinese dramas because i need more people to watch them so when i talk about it y'all don't get confused views i want to make videos on chinese drama like the video i made breaking down the harem system was one of my most fun videos i've made this year but i can't keep making videos if y'all don't know what i'm talking about and yeah thank you guys so much for getting to this point of the video it seriously means a lot if you guys have gotten to this point of the video please comment a swan emoji I want to see how many of y'all are real ones. If you guys want to further support me, please make sure that you hit the thumbs up button, comment. I reply to almost all of my comments. It's low-key a lot, but I love talking to y'all. And I'll definitely see you guys in the next one. Bye!